just no, just the board. <laughs> Not being smart, but no, there's no way. No. Yes, and uh, um, what you're looking at is if you look at the overall collections budget. Actually, I don't have a copy of it. Compared to last year, um, what it is is if you look at the salaries with the um, the one line item right here. Okay, if you'll look at kind of the um, second page of your budget, then you would see where it has all the accounts, the personnel. Okay, so 2011, does anybody want to see the budget? Well, 2011, you'll look at that the item, um, the total of salaries is 330841 and then we have a salary account for this year. That's fifteen hundred dollars. Yes, that money has already been for this year. I gave it to the uh, appraiser twenty six thousand five hundred. He's starting his classes, and so uh, for his appraisal classes, so he'll be getting a bump. Then so he gets paid the, for for attending the choir class. He's now registered, and he is required to get a designation. And so if you'll look at this year for the personal property clerk, that that's line item is twenty four thousand. And then if you'll look at two thousand and twelve, it's twenty thousand. Yes. And so that so that money, that four thousand dollars is going to the appraiser one who's getting their RPA this year. And so then they will be um, getting that four thousand dollars. So the overall um, salaries for this year and next year, with the exception of those two, the bottom line item did not increase. Because I basically am taking from one position and putting it to another position because of the um, RPA designation that they, they've gotten. And the reason why we do that is because we've done an enormous amount of studies showing that the surrounding counties, people that uh, are appraisers once they become a registered professional appraiser, they're very highly sought out after and we don't keep a, our appraisers in comparison. We become a training ground because it costs approximately twenty to $28,000 for an appraiser to obtain an RPA. And so in order to keep them, we try to keep their salaries comparable to the surrounding counties. When I looked at this, Pam, when you emailed that to me, what you're doing is you are actually increasing your appraiser one from thirty to thirty-four thousand, correct? Uh, <coughs> yes, yes. yes. And you're saying that that is because that person is reaching some sort of certification. Yes. Okay. And so that person is getting, you know, so four thousand dollars. That is a tremendous amount of increase for what is happening in the private sector of this county. I understand what you're saying about. Uh, not being a training ground, but I would also think that we could put some uh, contractual things in place that says that once you reach this, if you obtain the salary increase, you've got to stay with us for so many years because if you're going to invest the money, it's reasonable to expect them to hang around. And then the other thing is understanding that you've got the personal property clerk that went from 24 to 20. Again, because this is real tough times in Lavaca County. Um, be, even though it is a net increase of $1,500 on your salaries, it's, it's not reasonable to continue to give government employees um, increases based on what we've historically done simply because in the private sector that's not happening. People in the private sector are getting cuts, uh, serious cuts, and businesses are closing. I'd so. like to address the contract. Yeah. Uh, our, all of our employees, including myself, the appraisal district, we are at will employees. We do not have contracts. And so they can be terminated at will and they can resign at will. And so I know no appraisal district other than with a chief appraiser that they have contracts. And we don't want to engage in a contract with employees because if that employee doesn't work out and we have a contract, then we have to pay that contract out. And so that's not something that the appraisal districts in Texas do. And you're absolutely right. I support that as well. That is a good business practice. Texas is a, at free will state, you know, hire and fire state. 
But again, I would advocate that simply because it becomes a training ground, due to the burden of the taxpayers, I think that it is reasonable to expect that government employees have salaries that are in alignment with what is happening in the private sector. And again, I, in the private sector of this county, people are not getting raises at this rate, whether they're certified or, or when. And, and then I also believe that this certification, that employee did not pay for that certification, the Central Appraisal District did, correct? Yes. Yes. So I, I think that any certification that happens in the private sector, that person pays for that certification in order to get that increased salary. And I, and I, I, well, let me I, just address it. They don't get an increase in salary in the private sector. They can get five degrees, it's what the market will bear. They don't get an automatic increase in the private sector. Thank you. That's You're absolutely right. Absolutely. And absolutely. what the market bears. The reason right. that, that um, the district pays for it is because once an appraiser mm -hmm. is hired as an appraiser, they are required to, to register and they have to get that certification within a five year limit. And so if, if we are requiring that of them, we cannot expect them to pay the burden of that. Otherwise, we could just hire people to go out and do appraisals and they would be certified. But because the law requires that they register and that they get that registration timely. And so this so, is happening throughout the counties for anybody coming in. So that's happening in that same that's school. A, that's throughout the county. Sure, sure, sure. That is a requirement by the TDLR. Yeah. 